Welcome to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me again today is Abigail Petonis. Welcome again, Abigail. Hello. Great to have you. Abigail is a senior at Franciscan University. Um, as we continue this conversation, let's first start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we entrust ourselves to you knowing that you have a plan and, um, for us and that your will is always good. Help us to trust you. Help us to hand over our lives to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Abigail, um, last we spoke, you were, um, we, we talked about how you came to know the Lord, how you came to meet him. And Franciscan University was kind of very crucial for you in encountering the Lord when you were in high school, and you went there. I mean, so you're a student at, at Franciscan U. So uh, maybe you could, you know, I mean, there's a lot of alumni of Franciscan U that have been on conversations on discipleship, but uh, maybe you could talk about some of the the highlights, the elements of disciple formation that you found there yeah definitely so i i guess my disciple formation kind of starts freshman year like as i um served with damascus my summer going into my freshman year of college so i had a super good tight-knit catholic community straight from high school um and then going into college i suddenly did not have that um and i think i was honestly expecting franciscan every single day um, of college to be exactly like the youth conferences. And I learned very quickly that it was not, um, that it was still college and that I had to like go out and find my own community and find my own friends and, you know, get my tight niche of people. And so, but I really struggled. Um, In the first two weeks, I would go home to my dorm room. I would cry. I would call my mom and I would fill out my withdrawal papers because I was frankly unhappy. Um, and finally, I remember calling Brad Pierron, who I know has been on the show, and I said, Brad, I need you to find me a full-time mission spot at Damascus. And he said, absolutely not. He said, you are exactly where you need to be. He said, you can be a missionary at Franciscan, and that's just an easy way out, is if I just find you a spot on full-time mission and ask you to come. And I was like, I was very stubborn, and I was like, fine, whatever. And so I hung up the phone. And I went over to Household Commitments and I started to look at Household Commitments and ended up falling in love with the household I'm now a part of. Um, But I would say, and that really, I think, like, rebooted my whole disciple formation um, of I found really solid friends. I found really solid sisters. Um, I found two seniors um, who just kind of took me under their wing and they didn't, I wouldn't say that they evangelized to me in some way, um, cause they already knew that I had gotten really good formation at Damascus, but they just simply loved me as, as Abby and as I think the person that I was in front of them. And there's still two seniors that I talk to today and I talk to them almost every single week and just catch up on life. But I would say freshman year is where it started. And then, um, household just like really helped and I think being an upperclassman now, I've realized that I have to do that for other people. Um, That when I was a freshman and sophomore, I was the one being filled. But now that I'm a junior and senior at Franciscan, I'm the one who has to fill others. And right now, at the beginning of the semester, I'm like still trying to figure it all out with working and being a student and being in household. And um, but I think I'm more taking I don't want to say taking on the role of like the teacher because I'm still much very much being formed by the people around me. Um, but yeah, freshman year is where it started. And then I started to lead things. Um, I was really blessed with a really good spiritual director at Franciscan and he just saw a lot in me. So he let me lead a born in the spirit retreat as a sophomore, which was really unheard of at Franciscan. Um, but I was really blessed with a really good community that saw my potential, um, and he was probably the, he's been probably the biggest, um, I would say spiritual father in my life of kicking me in the butt when I needed to be kicked, um, but also being really gentle um, because I am a sensitive person, Um, but just really taking me under his wig and loving me. And yeah, so Father Matt, uh, Father Matt is his name. He's unfortunately not Franciscan anymore, 
but um yeah he's a parish priest now which is still really awesome <laughs> but yeah <laughs> um so the household system which um is it's kind of interesting it's it's um kind of a replacement for fraternity sorority yeah. models yeah um I know Hartley, Bishop Hartley, which is probably um, your favorite high school <laughs> in the diocese, they have kind of built like a yeah. household model system based somewhat loosely on Franciscan U. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, first of all, is the household system optional? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah, okay. but over, I would say about 80% of students at Franciscan participate in the household. Okay. Yeah. And um, what what does it kind of look like? What kind of commitments? Uh, so honestly, depends on the household. So my particular household, we have rosary. Um, I'm trying to remember all of them. Rosary. We have Lord's Day. Um, my household is one of the few households that has a sisterhood commitment. So every single week, we get together just as sisters, and we either can do a number of things, Bible study. Whenever I lead it, I choose to do something fun, um, like a trivia night or karaoke or something fun like that. And then business meeting is also one just to talk about businessy things. But it honestly depends. Um, one of my friends was coordinator of her household and they do a DMC on first and third Mondays. And then on the second Monday, they do holy hour. And then on the fourth Monday, they go out and pray with people in the community. What's a DMC? Uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all, the, all these sort of woke pious yeah. uh, expressions. <laughs> I, um, so, you know, with it, and it kind of gives you, it sounds like also kind of built into household mm -hmm. is discipling, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the, probably the upperclassmen are really kind of helping mentor or yeah. guide the underclassmen. Yeah, so just like sororities, um, I would say, we actually just had household life mass and the priest that gave the homily was like, we always say that they're like sororities and frats, but like they're more than that, obviously. They're sororities and frats like aren't Christ-centered like households are. Um, every household has a covenant um, that we live by. So mine in particular, we live by identity um, model. Our model is Mary. Um, committing a life to Christ and um, committing to our sisterhood and but yeah that so that discipleship aspect um, every girl in a household has a big just like a sorority um, and so your job as a big when you're announced as a big is you lead your little through formation so you're kind of like I wouldn't say a mom to them um, but you're a bigger sister and leading them through formation and making sure that they're being formed well in household and there's um obviously as you've talked about a common spiritual life mm -hmm. so probably household masses and prayers and yeah. you know devotions and things like that um and you know i don't is there like a sharing component where um you kind of talk about the faith with each other or would that be kind of more the big big little relationship um it honestly depends my household in particular we so when you are interested in the household you intent um so when i was a freshman i intended my freshman fall semester and every single sister is required to get we call it a one-on-one -on -one with the intent um, and that's kind of where you get to know them on a one-on-one -on -one basis without you know all 30 plus girls there um, and so if you're in the household and you take it really seriously um, you can get super deep or you can just get like super surface level um, I know in a lot of mine, I got a one-on-one -on -one with every single sister, and it was some of the best moments of my freshman year of just, like, getting off campus and going to grab a cup of coffee and not even them, I think, telling me what to do, but just being able to have a safe place to, like, share whatever I want. Um, you know, it's, I think, what really strikes me in, in your... Um in your description is really the need for small community. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about that this really is one of the foundational elements of missionary a missionary disciple lifestyle is that you have a small group yeah. that's supporting you, whether it's, say, you know, a women's group or a men's group or, you know, maybe a mix. Yeah. But we all, we all need this. It's a basic need. You know, the apostles were sent out in pairs. Um, obviously, they had the 12, mm -hmm. that community there. But to find that and to locate that in our own life, and, and you pointed to this in your own story, how, 
when you as a freshman there was this sense of where's my community where's my support and we have to find that and it can't just we can't just kind of say oh well you know I'm a member of the universal church yeah. or I'm a member of a parish yeah. Um, it has to be particularized just like our experience of the Lord's love um, and to really find that. Yeah. And, and I some, think yeah. that's like the beautiful thing about household is that there's a household. So I think some people would argue that like there's not a household for everyone, but there definitely is. Um, like my best friends at Franciscan are not in my household. Um, they're not. My household is not the people I hang out with, I would say, 85 percent of the time. Um and that's a very beautiful thing because I have my core group of friends and then I have my sisters that like lead me to Christ in a different way than I think my friends do. Yeah. You know, and we find that that experience of a small community outside of, you know, like going beyond Steubenville. I mean, you know, there are lay movements. Um people find it there you know covenant communities sometimes even in the pair you know I mean very often in the parish yeah. you know a, a small group um, sometimes there are people from other parishes that we just know but I think it's um, what what your witness gives us is to really appreciate that um, and to find that in our own life and the Lord definitely has those people yeah. for us yeah. as you said you know um everyone has a small group or needs a small group yeah. and the and this is really i think part of the lord's plan for us mm -hmm. the key is really to be open to it and we may very well be the initiators mm -hmm. of this small community well thank you abigail so much for joining us you for um, you've been listening to conversations on discipleship i'm your host father adam streitenberger with me today has been abigail patonis until next time peace and all good